what do you all think pro-Palestinians in Singapore want? Something is wrong or something needs to be done. Singaporeans have given up freedom for safety. It feels like government propaganda. If there were to be a racial and religious riot to break out in Singapore, how do you think the starting point looks like? Is it not this? Emergency meeting! Our social fabric is ripping! This is your daily catch-up. Singaporeans have been complaining about something that's being taught at schools. About the Gaza thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> then you're questioning whether it's like correct or not. Or is it like bias or exactly. sided, is it? So there's been a bunch of slides that have been circulating and parents are getting angry at what the schools are teaching their kids. Ooh. So this class used to be called CME, Civics and Moral ah, Education. I remember that. But it got recently changed to CCE, Character Why? and Citizenship Education. So, but essentially Why? what it's supposed to do is try to like develop like our kids, the value, social, emotional, well-being. Same thing, la, just different name. Think about Love that class. It was the do nothing class. The teacher's like, yo, everybody okay? He's like, <laughs> stress no hard. I'm like, mm, stress, I understand. Like, what fucking jokes are that there's class? There's no exam or anything, right? So no. it's just yeah. really just chill It's the chew do out, other right? class homework class. <laughs> and the oh, okay, now, yeah. I know, <laughs> class, now I know our class. Now I know our class. Those really of y'all want to put your head down, just put your head down and just rest. Right. Oh. Then you ask them off the light, right? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that too much, what right? is it? You're always the guy. Eh. <laughs> no, it's, it's appropriate. Right? I'm thinking about everybody else. Eh. But anyway, <laughs> before we get into this, right, I want to say first that I, myself and Jared, we don't really know much about this, but I think it's important to know. That's why we wanted to be part of this episode. So, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. But we are not here to wait on conflict. Yeah. Right. Mm, yeah. It's our observation of what's happening around Singapore since the conflict. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So why parents are angry and open letters have been written to Minister Chan Chun Singh, our mm. educational minister, is that parents think that students were given information that were lacking in accurate narration of historical events. So the slides that were shown essentially they illustrate uh key events in Israel and Gaza since seventh of October. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so people, the parents think that like uh, any attempts by students to correct the misinformation or to go into the further history of the conflict, right, has been ignored, shut down, or worse, punished. For example, uh, 7 October, Hamas launched a surprise attack on Israel, and Israel responded with an intensive aerial bombardment of Gaza. You actually have what? the intensive aerial bombardment. Uh. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, then after that, the next event is 21st October already. So mm. Israel eased the blockade on Gaza, allowing delivery of aid and supplies. Following that, Israeli troops expanded their ground operations in Gaza to destroy Hamas's military capacity. Uh, this part sounds Based on all of this, right, it seemed like, oh, Israel is the blockade. Oh, that's so nice. Like after 7 October, then Israel is allowing- They never say when they start in. the blockade, la, for uh, example. Yeah. And then okay, after that, suddenly they say like, oh, Israel is just going to destroy Hamas's military capacity, which is the narrative that Israel has been putting out. Mm. Yeah. So then I can see how they feel like this is uh, uh, anti-Palestinian narrative. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it's I, what they didn't put into the yeah, slides, I yeah. feel. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, we did speak to some of our colleagues about this also, right? And what they felt about the slides that was off was that it feels like government propaganda. Right. By not highlighting what Israel has actually done, are they downplaying the genocide that's going on and therefore trying to tell our young minds that actually nothing much lah. No, I think the lesson of the slide, right, is not supposed to tell you how to feel. It's just mm -hmm. trying to explain the current events. And we, I think we also don't know whether there's facilitated training or whatnot, or like the teacher will in the context. Because as good PowerPoint slides are, but I don't know whether these are good. It's as good PowerPoint not. slides are, you are supposed to, it's a point then the teacher talk. Ma. Mm -hmm. But we don't know what the feelers are. So mm -hmm. right now, everything is just kept to very, very brief. Then the teacher will expand and say, wow, a lot of people die, you know, that kind mm. of stuff. I, we don't know whether that happened, la, to be honest. Right. Yeah. There was this rumor, we're not sure whether it's true, it's not verified. Okay. Um, that when this class happened, right, that in some schools there was a teacher behind to observe as that teacher teach mm -hmm. for whatever mm. reason. No, I think, okay, a rumor that I've also heard is that because teachers were explicitly told before the teaching of the class to not impose their own views on the students. So right. it might be a check and balance in a sense. I see. It's my guess. Mm. I, I want to say, I, I don't think it's, I think I agree that the slides are downplaying the, the amount of death and the massacre, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I also think it could be an age appropriate thing and it's not the lesson that they want to go into, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But I don't think it's propaganda in a sense whereby the government is trying to skew the students' mind. 
Right. If anything, right, I do feel like the government is hoping the students don't get too riled up for better or for worse. Right. You don't get too riled up, it's better for society. We move on better as a society, everyone's happier. But mm -hmm. it's also, we are not teaching them a side of humanity that they perhaps should learn, but maybe not from school. One of the slides includes like a group discussion session and got two questions. Right. And one of the questions is, how can we show our care and concern for the people in Israel and Gaza? And then okay. there was a parent that complained la, and said like, uh, their child came back and asked like, eh, why do I need to show care and concern to Israel? Israel? Oh. The people, the children in that country are eating well while people in Gaza are starving and getting bombed. So this parent felt that schools should have just told the pupils about the history of the war, let them come to their own conclusions rather than asking them to think of ways to show concern for both sides. Speaking from a very like mediator, neutral uh, point of view. <laughs> okay, let's go. Like, I Your don't, little geek in this mediator. <laughs> like, I, I, I really don't, taken away identity. Like, honestly, I feel like as a neutral source, I don't see any issue with this question in per se. La. But yeah. the issue is that there is a disproportionate amount of violence that is happening here. Why do I need to show, why do I need to empathize with the bully? Is it Why not is fact? the school teaching my child? I'm, I'm not taking any side here. I, I, <laughs> honestly, I don't have enough information mm -hmm. to yeah, even yeah. take a stand. Uh. Yeah. But like, all I know is that there are people dying on both, both sides. sides. Is that fair enough for me to say? Is, I, I would think that that's the like, point also, right? Proportionally, yeah. that is proportionally yeah. sure. Yeah. But there is collateral damage on both sides. Yeah. And there are people who are innocent on both sides. Oh my God. Correct. Go, Correct. Going and to shouldn't that be the takeaway? Let's cross reference here. Uh. How okay. can we show our care and concern for the people in Israel? Uh. I put that question also now. What? How can we put <laughs> our care, how can we show our care our concern for people in Gaza? Yeah. That is also a bias statement. Yeah. This is the most balanced it could have been. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. And I once again. No, it could I have been know. for those affected. You know what? Lesson you, know, hindsight, you know what? Hindsight. Hey, 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 hindsight. Hey, hindsight. 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 Why why is it so important for them to be educated about something so recent now? Because like I feel like back when we were studying also, yeah. mm. the events that we were trying to understand weren't so current. Yeah. And honestly, when you learn about like the World War One, World War Two, I was cutting, so much of it is also heavily summarized, right? Yeah. Like now when you're older, you actually are interested, you go and look back, right? There are so many details that are missing. There's so much more nuance to the war, yeah. politics and all that, that you you never would have been taught in, 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 in secondary school or whatever. Man. MOE did come out and say what they are trying to get at la, with the slides. Yep. So essentially like for the younger kids is to teach them like, how to process the information. And then for the older kids is to teach them like more critical thinking, how you should analyze all the news and all that, like double check, fact check and all that. Ah, right. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, because even when we were researching quite heavily for the previous episode, when mm. we wanted to do about this topic also, mm. right? Wow. I also don't understand it. Like I keep rereading the same pages yeah, it's, it's and the tough, history. Right? I mean, it, right? yeah. I, we, we shouldn't go into the conflict on this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm. it's also where you want to draw the starting point of conflict. Correct, correct. And it dates back four figure years ago. So it's, it's so tough. fucking complicated. The main conversation here, right, is parents are angry that like, one, they weren't consulted or informed that this topic was going to be touched on. Right. And then, especially because this is a event of political, there's political roots, there's religious roots, right? Mm. Then should the schools be involving themselves in this? Why Don't they you think it's weirder if they avoided this topic when this topic is current affairs? Or I could see. we have done Russia, Ukraine? They do. They oh, got do. okay. Yeah. So this is part two. But I don't know exercise. when they did it in, in, I see. Uh, yeah, in connection. So in Russia, that. Ukraine, did parents outcry? Not that My I guess know. is it's not. not didn't make the news yeah, I didn't read. Would you complain if you had children in school and then they are not teaching your children about all these current stuff. I mean, I won't complain if they are not teaching. But okay, so it's, it's fairly recent that the school started teaching about like, let's let's help decipher what's happening in the world as we speak. Yeah. 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 And I think it's fantastic because I think we grew at a time where we took for granted a 50, year of, 50 years of peace. Eh? Mm. Like recently, um, a defense minister recounted that in 2014 or something like that, he went to a... He went to a conference. Uh, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> okay. conference, uh, some, like, some defense conference. He went to uh, something. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> some, <laughs> And there were world leaders there, right? And then they talk about how we have, we we now live in a year of 50 years of peace and Europe has advanced to a place whereby we have eradicated wars. Like wars are no longer relevant to Europe. Yeah, and he recounted <laughs> how this is all broken now. Mm, yes, yes. We, we, as in this 2014. Yeah, that's what yeah. I, was, I was waiting for the ball yeah, to and drop. In, in, in our time as students, we grew up in a time of peace. Eh. Like we are used to one war at a time. Eh. You know what I mean? Two, never. Two, two wars was one too many war. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But now it's a time of multiple conflicts at once. I don't know whether Singaporeans don't know this, that uh, Mindef upgraded their likelihood of war from unlikely to non-zero. 
the yeah. phrasing though. Yeah. Like non-zero. Non-zero. <laughs> so again, right, the point of bringing this up and educating the students on it, what is the point of it? They're trying to teach students how to think critically as well as what is like Singapore's position in all of this. Singapore's position in all of this is very important. Agree, but at that level. So so I think when, when for example, 9-11 happened, I think we were all in school, right? At that point of time. How was it addressed with y'all? Because obviously your parents were trying yeah. to process. Yeah, it was kind of, because it's so fresh, but I think it would be very difficult. But at last time most, have right, this class, right? At most, maybe your principal come out and say that these are the events that On happened. The day that yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. No, but do, you, do you think that's how you want the kids these days to live? But yeah. to use it right now as an example, to go and push it out to students, I feel like it's totally unnecessary if the goal is if the for the first part of the goal, which is to teach people how to uh, teach children how to think critically. Yeah. If they have the curiosity and they want to ask and they want to figure it out, then they go and learn. Then if they choose to bring it up in the context of school mm-hmm. with a teacher or their history teacher or somebody like this CME teacher or whatever, then the teachers should be given the instructions on maybe how to navigate this in a way that is like to be uh, careful, I, right? I think that's where the problem is. Can I tell you what I, the actual goal is? I think sure. The critical thing is a nice byproduct, nice byproduct. If mm. I were MOE, I also write that down. What I think the actual goal is, is to make sure that we don't create a students, uh, a generation of students, right? They have no trust in Singapore's morality and trust in government. Cause that one have impact to society and the social fabric, which I'm seeing now, like after 34 years of living here, right? That many of them might be growing on households that are telling them that the, the country is not doing anything about it. The, our country is genocidal. Singapore is genocidal. Yeah, and what, what's the government going to do? But the government has done something about it, right? Or at least like Quite responded few, to it, right? So is it a case of like- Responded the, factually. The household is not agreeing with the response. Because it's not like they're being like, trying to close their eyes and be apathetic yes. about it. It's about uh, the family saying, no, I don't agree with that. Don't listen to them. Yeah. I think that's the problem. The problem yeah. is that it became political. Yeah. I think the <laughs> difficulty, right, is that they are arguing on two different planes. To the Singaporean government, I think it has always been a Singapore first ideology, which people forget. Because no matter how much I research, right, then I'm just going to fall into the who is right, who is wrong trap. Mm, yeah. And then, but <laughs> yeah. I need to remember that who is right, who is wrong does not supersede Singapore's cohesion and harmony. Correct. And that is what I feel the government keeps is continuously trying to remind people of, yeah. including through this class. You know what I mean? So they're yeah. arguing totally different things. Yes, like, yes, oh, yes. you are not condemning. But then Singapore is like, it doesn't matter whether we condemn or don't condemn. But we Singapore need to did, care did our own condemn. First. Yeah, we did. But yeah. I'm saying that like people are unsatisfied with what Singapore has done so far. Yeah. But then Singapore is saying, that's not the point. So now, now if, we, if we contrast that, right, to what the government has, like what we grew up with, uh, some things that, rhetoric that we've been hearing in that Singaporeans have given up freedom for safety. Uh, yes. Do y'all kind of know what, kind of only know what that means? And like, do you, are you okay with giving up said freedom? I think kind of, yeah, I get it. <laughs> like in terms of like when Singapore, you, you don't see our union um, commission or sanction, I don't know, allow like strikes. They, they do lah, they mm. do. It's not a not possible thing, mm. but they discourage, right? They make sure it doesn't get there. And if you you own self go and protest on something that you don't like, uh, the police can catch you if you don't have permit. Mm-hmm. Do y'all kind of understand and appreciate why so? Do y'all understand what we are giving up and what I, we got in return? Okay, I feel like yes, but the problem is that because this has been manufactured for us and in a sense defended where we don't even have an instance where we had to learn this lesson in, ah. in our generation growing up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like then people are like, it clearly no problem. Then why are we so restricted? It's the government being an overly protective nanny. It feels like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Like, but, but, if it's, but meaning that we we agree lah that it, this wasn't the best. This we is not the best topic. This is definitely on not yes. the right. And the slides suck. The slides suck. I think it needs to be talked about. The last slide, I do understand what I what I think they are trying to illustrate, even though the last slide is the one that pissed a lot of people off. Can I explain what the last okay, slide yeah, is? Okay, I will read you the last slide. So they gave a scenario <clears throat> ah. and then essentially there's a lesson to be learned here. Okay. Okay, so Arun and Samuel are good friends. 
since primary one. <laughs> Jeez. No, that's true. That's a weird part already. <laughs> they enjoyed playing soccer together with their friends during recess. One day, Arun and Samuel decided to compete against each other through a friendly soccer match. During the match, Arun's team was winning the game, but Samuel's team performed poorly. Samuel became upset when Arun's team jeered and spoke rudely to him and his team members. He realised that Arun joined in with his team. Samuel lost his temper and threw a punch at Arun. Arun retaliated by throwing a stone which he found but it hit one of Samuel's teammates injuring them badly. I don't understand what I learned. No, both sides are offending parties and the other sides are escalating the offence because if you look at like now I ask the student, right? Let's say you once again, you are a, like a 14 year old, right? Why, why did Arun need to throw a stone? I mean, you, you throw a stone, you know you're going to injure what? But you threw a stone because he was punched by Samuel, correct? Mm. Okay, fair enough. But why did Samuel punch? Did because Arun the start it? Rude, and I guess this analogy could go on forever, forever. But it's more of, it's a tit for tat that goes on for a really long time. And depends on where you draw the line, who goes to jail. Because now I ask you this, now who gets detention or who gets expelled? Mm. Mm. So like where we draw the line in terms of how violent is too violent or how mean is too mean. And who started what? But once again, we're talking to students here. Ma. Probably this was prepared for 13 year old all the way to 17 year old if you're sec five. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right? Yeah, so same, it has to same. be rather broad in that sense. So I, I do kind of understand or I rather hope that this was what the conversation is. Like. But when you yeah. read it, you also tulana. Mm. You are comparing like both like so innocent, so innocent. and, and mm. But I think the main problem is that is in the main problem that pro-Palestinians have been having against no matter what the Singapore government says or does, right? Is that they feel like, like when I try to present something as balanced yeah. and therefore I don't go into too much about like the degree of force that is perpetrated by either side. Yeah. But then by trying to appear balanced, you are actually being biased. I feel like it's similar to the conversation on, on abortion. Should abortion be allowed or this loud, right? And we, we've had a Catholic priest, Father Terence, they come and tell us. And the first question he asks us is, where's your starting point of life? Mm -hmm. Is it at conception? Is it at birth? Yeah. If you're, you feel like the starting point of life is at conception, then we have to agree to disagree because then there's no debate to be had. Mm -hmm. But if you mm -hmm. do believe at a three mark, two mark, somewhere in between there is life already, then we can debate this, right? Mm. So I think similarly with this, right? If the, the students kind of want to know and the teachers want to discuss with the students, they also shouldn't do it without a timeline. They need a agree upon timeline because if the class is majority um, Malay Muslim, they are very much more familiar with this conflict because perhaps their family discuss it more than the, uh, than, than the other people, then you will feel like, oh, okay. So then the whole conversation of that class would skew one direction. Yeah. And then we go to another one where they feel like, oh, you know, Singapore and Israel friend, friend one, mm. that group of people, they skew it that direction. Then there's no consistency in, at the end of the day, what have we figured out like mm -hmm. as, as an education process? Yeah. I think the slide can be better. Yeah. Or you do, yeah. Okay, let, let's say we go back to another situation, which is fairly recent also, mm. when China held Singapore's Terex vehicles and- Or oh, Terex. Uh, Terex okay. vehicles and oh. don't let them uh, mm -hmm. clear custom and come yeah. to Singapore. And then the news will come out now it's part of the school or rather the way Singapore has done it. Lah. Or we, we, we go in, we do the, the pledge every single morning. We marikita every single morning, right? It's meant to instill national pride, faith, confidence in the country. Mm. That has been the function of school unless you want to change that. Yeah. 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 So in that incident, when the global news talking about Singapore is put to shame, lah. Singapore is a lap dog or bug no bite. No, I think it's very much the duty of our schools to talk to our students mm -hmm. and let them know what's at stake. Why don't, why don't buy it? Because when you're young at that time, especially you're like, oh, we bomb them, ah, you know what I mean? Yeah. NDP, you see all the missiles, oh, come on, you're like, why, why don't you use one? Ah? Use one, we got so many, right? Mm. Like, I feel like it is uh, very much the duty of our school to inform them what's at stake. Eh. Mm -hmm. You won't fully understand it, but you have somewhat of context or trade-offs and you won't be trigger but happy. I think a bit of the nuance here, right, is that parents are not unhappy that they touch on this subject. People are unhappy yeah. that they mm. feel like they touched on this subject in a biased way that was packaged to look balanced. Agree. Which begs the question, right? What what do you think? What do you all think um, the pro-Palestinian protesters in Singapore want? What's the ideal outcome? What, what is, is the, the ideal outcome? Outcome? Is it boots on the ground? Is it they hoping Singapore attempt to invade yeah. mm. Israel? Singapore what has is it? condemned uh, Israel's actions and said that it's like unnecessary lives lost, innocent uh. lives lost and all that and then like ask them to stop, right? Yeah. Which we have done from very early on, in fact, like November, October already, we do yeah. already. We've done twice or twice. Second publicly. thing, send it. 
which we have done. Okay. So millions of dollars. And then we also send like uh, the Red Cross and all that like medical aid and all that to go to help already. So then the next step from that, right? It feels to me like it's probably the sanctions. And then after that is troops on the ground already, which I feel like are two things that are detrimental to Singapore to do at this moment, at this point. Question mark. And then like, so then I'm wondering what more do pro-Palestinians want from Singapore? And is it just a case of wanting to feel more hurt? Because in Singapore, trying to maintain this very neutral position, I'm almost trying to tell you, right? It doesn't matter how much force Israel is using. Mm. And is it, does it just go down to how the Singapore government has to posture themselves, right? To help people who feel this injustice feel more hurt. I remember so recently, rather out of character, Madam Ex-President Halima Yako. Yeah, came out to, <coughs> to share a piece in solidarity with the victims of the Palestine conflict. Yeah. And um, very uncharacteristically, mm. Minister of Law, Shanmugam also came out to echo, basically he said RT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. Like, he didn't. Like, he just said, I agree. Okay, he screenshot, okay. then he said, I agree. Like, you know, which is like, like old people, I, I, RT, I guess. <laughs> which, and, and the comment section flooded, right? We got a yeah. lot of people that'll be like, sir, please use your position to do something about this. Then please do something. Now the question is what? Because technically what? he already did something. He can, right? yeah. He can say less sanction. <laughs> Who pays for it? The people of Singapore pays for it. It's his job not to do that. But then people are still saying, oh, we are not doing enough. We are not doing enough. So mm -hmm. then what I'm curious no, about No, like is, why is Singapore genocidal when the rest are not? And I will explain where that came from. There's been a post on Reddit that's gone a bit viral. It's a screenshot from an Instagram post where the caption reads, thinking of places to go on holiday this year, then give some examples of beautiful and lovely destinations. Then where to absolutely not go? Genocidal states. Example, Italy, Switzerland, Singapore, UAE. And then the comments under this Instagram post, right? Are like, Singaporean here. Yeah, you can skip our country. They don't have the balls to do the right thing. Heck, it's getting worse. What's the point of having the most powerful passport if Singapore government is just complicit in genocide? Singaporean here, feel free to boycott our country and don't come here. We are, as, then say like government turned a blind eye to what Israel has done. Singaporean here, boycott our country. Don't fund our economy at all. Don't fund my country with tourism. Expensive and nothing more man-made than Singapore. Don't come to Singapore, go somewhere else. So one of the comments that under this Reddit post that I think rightly summarized this whole uh, thing that went down on Instagram is when you care so much about the problems of other people's countries, you actively seek to hurt your own country instead. You know, yeah. tourism, big part of Singapore. Eh? Big part, actually. No, but it's the branding. I think it's the branding that and, and I think STV struggle with this for the longest time. It's just that it's not through like conflict, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> that when they go out there and they put an ad about come visit Singapore, right? Then the Singaporeans start making fun. Nothing here, don't come. You know what I mean? Then when, <laughs> when you see your own people like that, right? Like you go see like the, the, the people from the Philippines, you know, they like come oh, out they our beaches, our yeah. food is the best, all that. Sentosa. Yeah, at least when Singapore and Malaysia fight over whose food is better, huh? Like people was like, okay, I'll let me try for myself. Mm. You know, but it's mm. like Singapore, Malaysia better than Singapore. Be like, ah, just go Malaysia. Then you will just go <laughs> Malaysia, ma, you know what I mean? And, that this was the post that I shared with the team that I, I felt like, okay, it's real now, that whole social fabric. Mm -hmm. It is ripping because my observation is this, right? Many people think this is a Malay Muslim community thing. I don't think so because mm -hmm. it's not isolated to the Malay Muslim community. Yeah. I think like regardless of your race or your religion, there has been quite a few pro-Palestinian supporters yep. that have spoken up and yeah. Like yeah. even protests have taken place. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And so now it's become us versus them. It's so easy to see and, and the comment section got really nasty. And, and it's, it's, it's my people, it's Chinese people, you know, that they will kill their own, they will thank their own country for something that happened all the way around the world. Lee Kuan Yew is right not to place them in top positions. You know, that kind of stuff. Where now, okay, if I'm part of the Malay Muslim community, I'll be pissed off, especially if I'm not very much involved in this conversation on this conflict. Uh -huh. right? I'll be like, oh, suddenly my own countrymen, no doubt of another race, but we are all Singaporeans. Now you're circling us together and saying that, oh, we are right. We cannot be trusted because of the color of our skin. Eh? We are Arun and Samuel. It's just who threw the first punch at this point. <laughs> no, do, do you see, do you see that Singapore is very close to boiling point or not? We're at the jeering part now. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. No, so my, my point is that something that happened around the world and something that many Singa Singaporeans feel for, and rightly so, la, you understand, you see people suffering, then you kind of understand you want to stop the bullying, stop the hit. And, it's to the point where it might become a racial riot in Singapore because for better or for worse, the Singaporean Chinese are 
I mean, for worse. Hey, the Singaporean Chinese are saying, oh, the Malay Muslim community in Singapore gets really emotional. They always put their, their race and religion over their statehood. Mm. Yeah. And that's why they are not in the Air Force, for example. Mm. Mm. And, but this has nothing to do with the Malays and Chinese in Singapore. Mm. And now the, the, the Malay Muslim community in Singapore have a right to be upset at comments made like this because Lee Kuan Yew had to apologize when he made this comment way back. Mm. Right. And, the, and someone from the Malay Muslim community called him out and said that we are Singaporean first. Mm. And Lee Kuan Yew came out on record to apologize. And now this is happening again, but the conflict has nothing to do with us. Not even something our leader said. Mm. Yeah, so- So regardless of the source, it this has how, like, been creating, bus riot it has been creating like <laughs> kind of like microaggressions or like yes. giving sp space for it to happen. And yeah. that will inadvertently like kind of reach a if boiling you, point like is what you're saying. Like, you know, we talk about how Singapore's a miracle state in terms of how the different races and religion managed to live in harmony. Racial harmony. If there were to be a racial and religious riot to break out in Singapore, what do you think? You, how do you think the starting point looks like? Is it not this? The burning of a religious- You know, is it, I think- <laughs> Is it, it not is this? Is it not this how it starts? The microaggressions? Yeah, like this, exactly like this on Reddit, on Facebook posts where people are upset, where people start clustering, where oh, all Chinese people are the same. Yeah. I, I feel like the difficulty is that our racial harmony has felt manufactured all along. Like people always say, well, it's not, we don't have racial harmony, it's racial tolerance. Yeah, yeah, and then oh, therefore, yeah. like this stereotyping of every race and religion, right, has been going on, ma, but now people are biting onto a reason to use it against other races or religions. Yeah. I want to double down on a point that I think uh, from my own personal lens uh, mm -hmm. that Singapore is not being biased because Singapore is just looking at self-preservation, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In that, number one, we are not sure, we are not sure what the would-be protesters want, right? We have we have condemned and called for a ceasefire, condemned the killings and called for a ceasefire. And a release mm -hmm. of hostages. We can sanction, but once again, this sanction is paid for by the economy, uh, which is your parents and your neighbors and your friends and yourself. Mm. Because, and, and it's difficult to sanction a country like Israel because Singapore, it's not just economic ties. Mm. It's defense ties. Mm. In that we get a lot of our defense equipment from them. Right. And you don't, you, these are equipments that we invested in years ago that need maintenance and need parts and need upgrading for years mm -hmm. to come. Yep. And so now our own thing is at stake when we just decide to sanction. But nobody sanction, we just own self-going sanction. You know what I mean? Just to please our people, we sanction and then we kill our own economy. Not kill lah. We damage our own damage. economy yeah. and we weaken our defense supplier. It's very, or yeah. then the next one is what? Singapore go and be a mediator or Singapore go and invade Right. Israel already, right? you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. what, what else is there? No, but do you think that because a lot of people, even in our previous video when we covered this topic, right? They are saying that Singapore in a sense owes a debt to Israel for coming to help us and bu in building up our military when yeah. no one else would. And therefore, right, no matter what, we are not going to use, we are not going to go any further than saying, hey, Israel don't like that. Lah. And that's not enough. So, but what's more? Like given, let's say Singapore busted, mm -hmm. right? Let's say Singapore busted. So Singapore is a, don't care about friendship. They don't remember that Israel used to help them. Mm. And Singapore busted, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what's more? What's more should Singapore do that actually doesn't harm itself more? To me, I cannot, it's difficult for me also to wrap my head around survival, right? Versus standing up for injustice. Like I can see so much wrong that is going on, right? But I have to choose to be selfish in this moment because if not, I'm screwed also. If government also climb on the moral high horse and say, yeah, I will sanction you. I will drop bomb on you. I will give weapons to Palestine. Now you affect your own people. Your own people pay for it. Your, your, your husbands go and fight in a war. There is nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? That, that to me is what I cannot reconcile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, it's, it's rather clear and, and Singapore is willing to split over these things. Eh? It's so, so, how, so fragile, eh? What the <laughs> That to me is the, like one of the things that I always fall back to mm. is how far are you willing to go? Are you willing to send your, your husband? Son, yeah. yeah, your son. Brother. Are you willing to let go of, of, of these people to go and die because of this or not? Yeah. And, and to which there might not be a change uh, and impact and a dent in this, in, in mm. what's going on <laughs> also. That to me is the scariest part. Now then, then we take a step from that. Okay, maybe we have, people are saying, not, let's not put boots on the ground. So I'm not willing to sacrifice the lives of my husband. But let's say he, your husband's gonna lose his job and he and his 300 other colleagues gonna lose their job hmm. and they all have families to feed. Are you okay with that also? That's just one company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't know if we came to this conclusion kind of before, but whenever there is a lot of 
whenever there's conflict, like a lot of the times, and you are taking sides and whatnot, right? Like one of the best things you can do is go and share your thoughts, ideas, and your questions with somebody that believes in the opposite. Mm -hmm. And mm. then try to understand both sides. Because there are questions that, there are questions that you would never have thought of before. And there are yeah. also going to be answers. And, and, and at the end of the day, you are trying to get, you, you, you both have the same goal of removing conflict, ma. Mm -hmm. no, I'm not I sure. don't know if they have the same goal though. <laughs> I'm not sure yeah. because when you, <laughs> see, <laughs> when, the, see the, when you see the statement is this, right? Yeah. That if you are okay to look at children being slaughtered and then they go to hospitals that are bombed and have no medicine and like you are supporting genocide. Like if, you know, if you are not as this much, you are supporting genocide. <laughs> like it's, it's very difficult to say like, like even don't care is wrong. Like even I want to live my own life is wrong. Yeah, but the moment you take it there, there's no point talking to this person. No, exactly. But that, mm. that's my, I feel like people that are trying to have a discourse about it, not mm. that it matters, I mean, see if they care, you mm. know what I mean? Like, people that are having a discourse about this are just having a discourse about it. But that is, I don't think that is a majority. My fear is that we are looking at a few select comments and not the bigger picture. So because yeah. again, right, as much as we see so many of these comments, um, saying certain things like genocide and all this kind of shit, like you support genocide, they are only a handful and don't represent the majority. Which is why I think like, yeah. it goes back to having the real conversations with the, like where the real conversations happen is where you need to be and talking to the people who who, who might have different views and whatnot to in, in order to understand them better. Yeah. yeah. But So there is also a sentiment online that the government is censoring pro-Palestinian voices. So for example, there's I think there's been an influencer on TikTok that shared that I think she was coming back from JB and then she got detained for a period of time. Right. And the end product of that was that they were just trying to get her to remove one of her posts that was talking about this. Did you about catch what this. the post said? No, no, I didn't. Uh. She, I don't think she's allowed to share also because they asked her to take down already. Oh, she just uh, said uh, it was a post on the, yeah. the conflict. Yes, line. correct. Yeah. And then she was asked to remove, then she was let go. And then also because the government is not allowing protests to happen. Ma. Right. So do you think that the government should be allowing more of this like discourse to be happening amongst civilians? instead of trying to control the narrative by disallowing everything. I mean, put in my indoctrinated head. <laughs> <laughs> this actually happened as rumor. What actually happened? No, yeah, actually the, the influencer thing. thing. The influencer I think MFA ah, confirmed it. God damn. I think I asked before a friend that worked in, in, in policy in Singapore and I asked why why couldn't... I mean, on to the first point is that there they are no pro-Israel supporters that is prof prolific to silence like, at this point because mm -hmm. there's only pro the major voices are pro-Palestinian voices. So you're saying that if someone come out and say, honestly, Israel is right, while everybody support Israel, send it to Israel instead, they will get shut down. If it's as a reply, as an opinion, I think it's fine. I think if it's a rally to the people in It's a rally, is I put in my Instagram story daily. I think if you do that, and if that person go out there, he says that, and he says that the Malay Muslim community in Singapore are getting too emotional and they are putting their race before the country, 100% he get take down. With re regards to the protests, I. I did ask because I, 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 we were in contact with the person that was going to organize the protest. We were going to have her on the show, right? Um, but in, in the end, she, she decided maybe not today. Lah. Um, and so we knew for a fact that the protest was going to be very much a peaceful thing. There was nothing that they truly want. They just want to stand in solidarity and blah, mm. blah, 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 blah. The, the fear and, and concern is that if they do that, then they will, if someone else applies, but this was just one person tell me, lah. Mm. If they allow that and they someone to wants to the apply for a pro-Israel conflict, once again, this is very early into the conflict. Uh. Yeah. So if somebody protest. wants to uh, apply for pro-Israel protest, they, they need to be fair ma, to say yes to that person because the government wants all voices to be mm. heard. And then when they do that, they are the government has anticipated that Singaporeans get very emotional about this, that there, will, there might be violence or whatever <laughs> yeah. from es people that are yeah. uh, pro-Palestine. So- <sighs> But so the pro I, I don't think the propaganda per se was to get Singaporeans to support Israel. The propaganda per se or the protection of conversation per se is to protect Singapore. The social fabric. Mm. That was my understanding. Question. So the pink dot happens, right? Yeah. And we Yo. know that people protest the pink dot. So would the government, if somebody go and uh, apply and then say, I want to protest against pink dot. The white dot, right? Yeah. The it's actually dot. been, yeah. Yeah, you can. I can. Didn't you it can. happen? I feel like no, it as did. In, as in, they, that one is they just show up at Pink Dot. But if I want to hold a whole rally at Hong Lim Park, right, to say everybody who is anti-gay, come here today. Can? Ooh, maybe cannot. I think that's seditious. Why cannot? Because you're inciting hate. Yeah. Because yeah, if that's your 
tech line or whatever, right? That's your movement. Oh, oh, You're inciting yeah. shit. Sorry, then you uh, might create violence in the LGBT community. Let me rephrase. Uh, we want to promote traditional family values. Come yeah. to Hong Lim Park. Oh, yes. I, I think that one have. That one show pass. Yeah. Okay. That one show pass. Now, the, the fear is that now will the LGBTQ community- RGBT. RGBT. <laughs> CMYK community. <yeah. laughs> will the LCDQ let? <laughs> no, so will, will, will the LGBTQ community come out and will, will there be likelihood of violence? Honestly, I think no. Yeah. So I think there is, there is the clear, clear difference. But once again, I don't speak for the government. It's just my understanding. But shouldn't it be the opposite? Shouldn't it be that they, if they consider it already, then they should allow both and and make sure that they take the necessary measures to protect. I it's think not protect. about the physical violence yeah. on that day. One, eh? It's about the racial clash, if any, or ideological clash. That is not just on that day, then, you know, if it's 7 March, then 8 March, we're like, Makan, you know? It, that's the start. Lah. But then this is, this this form of censorship is... Is the right, is the exact right that Singapore gave away in exchange for... Safety. Safety. A bit nanny state. And orderly. Lah. It's really the 0.5% of Singapore that do want to do this and they still have an outlet. Now the 99.5% of them don't get our traffic stopped because they protest in the middle of the road. They don't get no bus drivers because the bus drivers go and protest something, you know? So like life goes on efficiently. Yeah. It's the Singapore way. But that, so then as a, as a, as just a citizen, right? I still have a right to feel that something is wrong or something needs to be done. And then I need to be able to bring it up enough so that the relevant authorities or, or bodies or whatever can then do something about it. And then when you see that nothing is being done or you feel like not enough is being done, then that's where all this is, that's where the problem is, correct? Yeah, but where the fine line is, is in that the government, I don't think is silencing people or asking people to remove their posts, right? For simply saying that I stand with Palestine. Mm. I don't think that's the case. I think it's when it's becoming a rallying call for people to maybe do or say certain things or to heavily influence them to think a certain way. Yep. Then that's when it gets dangerous because Singapore is at stake. So as a citizen, you say I don't, I'm not going to do all this, right? Yeah. But I do want, where, where do I go if I'm really not happy about something and I feel like the government should do, be doing something about it? Your MP. Mm. Or you can, you can email. All their emails are online. And then I just say that I hope that what the government can do something about it in parliament yeah, and then they will, yeah. es they, they will they will escalate. It, yeah. Yeah. Mm. it happens as in this is the process for everything. But right. they have to choose lah. As in they have to, you, if honestly you are the only email they get, maybe <laughs> they're not going to debate yours in parliament. Yeah. Right. So in conclusion, <laughs> what is it, Denise? We should teach schools. <laughs> MOE, we let's re collab. We redo the slides. We can do. I say we collab. For Chinese people. <laughs> you don't make decks. I don't make the deck, you don't. We, we know. <laughs> we will upload it on YouTube. <laughs> no, Min, Min Chan come here already. So now we go to his place. <laughs> okay, I mean, obviously we know that this is a very, very touchy topic and uh, MOE also now knows this. Yes, and apologies for our very imperfect understanding. If any, Please, I'm so sorry. Any, yeah. Please be kind in the comments. But what we are trying to get at with today's episode, which we've also mentioned at the start, right? Is really to refocus. Yeah, to refocus on where is the line drawn mm. between as a country, if there's something that we're happy with, what are we willing to give? Mm. When, mm. when we say, no, do something, do something. Okay, what are you willing to give in return? Yeah. Can we agree on, on that line drawn? Mm. I mean, obviously we stand with innocent lives lost and we see what is happening and we feel for that. Yes. And I think like this, this situation has become very much like everybody against the Malay Muslim community because they seem to be the ones that are more outspokenly pro-Palestinian, right? But mm. actually across my social media, I've been seeing like regardless of race or religion, yeah. people are speaking up about this. Yeah. And it's not uh, like it's singling not a Malay out Muslim any- thing. Yeah, 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 correct. But the narrative is slowly becoming, yes. right? And that's Which how the tipping point. Part, yeah, that's yeah. how the, the sparks happen. But at the end of it, right? It's Singapore first. Oh. So thank you for watching. Do leave your comments down below. If you have any answers to or suggestions to any of the pointers that we mentioned, do let us know. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. On a side note, right? I think like researching this has uh, shown me how badass actually Madam Halima is. She is, I've been saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you see like her Facebook post, you know she has actually made more than 10 posts Gee. calling out this whole Israel thing. Mm. And then like previously also, they, like she spoke up against the why rapists above 50 years old are exempted from caning. Then like misogynistic comments from the podcast and all yeah. that, like she called them out. You, you want to try getting her on the show again? Try one time already. Her PA reject us. Madam, please.